Hey what's up guys, in this week's project I'm going to show you how I built this MIDI controller. It uses a capacitive touch sensor and NeoPixel LEDs to make a portable drum machine. When you tap on one of the six pads, it plays a MIDI note. It also features a step sequencer so you can record and play back a pattern. Here's how the circuit works. We'll connect the capacitive touch sensor to the Adafruit feather. We'll also connect the NeoPixel ring. This slide switch will power the circuit on and off. The NeoPixel LEDs animate in sequence to the beat of a given tempo. Whenever the capacitive sensor detects touch, it'll tell the feather to send MIDI notes. This module can actually transmit those MIDI notes over Bluetooth low energy. This means we can control a number of software instruments and MIDI devices over Bluetooth. So you can totally reuse this circuit to make your own project. The code used in this project was written by Todd Treese. His example sketch is bundled with the 15-step Arduino library. It's easy to modify the code so you can add more pads or change up the MIDI notes and tempo. To house the electronics, I designed an enclosure and modeled each component using Fusion 360. I 3D printed the two-piece enclosure using Coffee PLA filament on the FlashForge Creator Pro. But you don't need to own a 3D printer to make this project, you could try using a 3D printing service. I'll have the files available for free to download and modify. The parts printed nicely on a print and z skin without a heated bed. I used the Othermill Pro desktop CNC to machine the parts out of aluminum. If you want to see the full process and how I did this, you can check out my Milling Monday video. I was able to machine the six pads from a piece of 1 8 inch stock aluminum. Once all of the pieces were cleaned and polished, I did a quick test fit by installing them into the cover. To build this project, I used a 16 NeoPixel ring, an MPR 1 to 1 capacitive touch sensor, a native fruit feather 32 4 blue fruit LE, a slide switch, and LiPo battery. You can get the full list of parts from my tutorial linked below. I like to start every project by wiring up the slide switch. We'll need two pieces of wire to connect it to the Adafruit feather. I tin the wires and then solder them to the pins on the slide switch. But before I can connect it to the feather, I'll extend the voltage and ground pins with pieces of flexible PCB. I found them to be a bit tricky to handle, so I secured these tweezers to a pair of helping third hands. This way I can keep it steady while I tin the pins with solder. Now I can connect them to the voltage and ground pins on the Adafruit feather. Once they're soldered in place, I can wire the slide switch to the ground and enable pin. Next, I can plug in the LiPo battery and test out the slide switch. I use the enclosure to measure the lengths of wire I'll need to connect the cap sensor to the Adafruit feather. Then I can match up another wire and cut it down to size. I like to secure multiple wires to third helping hands so I can easily tin them one after the other. A piece of heat shrink tubing will keep wires together and this just makes connections nice and tidy. Now I can secure the capacitive touch sensor and solder in the wires. Next, I'll connect it to the Adafruit feather. The flexible PCB made it easy to wire in voltage and ground. I'll need three wires to connect the NeoPixel ring to the Adafruit feather. I tinned them with solder and wired them into power, ground, and data in. Now I can wire them into the Adafruit feather. I used pieces of copper foil tape to connect the aluminum touch pads to some wires. This stuff has an adhesive backing so I can stick them to the surface of each touchpad. Next, I'll cut up some wires using the same method like before. I tinned each piece of copper tape and soldered one wire per pad. So here's all five pads wired up and ready to connect to the cap sensor. I secured the capacitive touch sensor to a pan of ice and connected the five wires. Each touchpad will connect to one of the input pins. And that's pretty much it for the wiring. Now I can connect the battery and test out the whole circuit. These machine screws will secure the components to the enclosure. I inserted the machine screws through the bottom to tap the standoffs. I fastened them about halfway and placed the PCB over the standoffs, held it in place while I screwed them in all the way. I repeated this process for the Adafruit feather. The switch is inserted into a little holder that snaps into place. The actuator is accessible through the other side so we can still turn it on and off. Now I can plug in the battery. The NeoPixel ring snaps into a holder on the cover. Then, I installed each touchpad through the bottom of the cover and snapped them in. 
Once I place the battery inside the enclosure, I can lay the cover over the top and press it down until it clicks into place. And that's pretty much the whole assembly. For a full step-by-step -step tutorial, be sure to check out the learning guide linked below. You can also change things like tempo, pitch, and velocity on the fly using a few simple button combinations. And if you're wondering about the latency with Bluetooth, check this out. I hope this project inspires you to make your own MIDI devices. Hey, if you like this project, you can let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to subscribe to the Adafruit channel for new videos every week.